Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the 3D Game Engine tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be starting arguably the most difficult part of the whole architecture shift, and that is getting lighting to work in our new rendering engine based system. And here's really why this is so hard. If I go into my text editor and... oh, wrong file. If I go into the text editor and look at the Fong Fragment Shader, then you'll notice something. We have these constants, max point lights, max spotlights. We have a fixed limit to how many lights we can have. And there are things we can do about that. For instance, we can generate the shader dynamically. We can change these, we can like generate the shader with the appropriate constant for however many lights we end up having in our scene. And that's, you can do that, but it's not a very good idea. For one, things get really messy when you start adding and removing lights dynamically, because then if you add more lights, you're going to have to delete the shader and rebuild it, and then that gets complicated. And furthermore, most of these lights aren't going to be affecting every pixel, and you're going to be in, and you're going to end up doing a whole bunch of wasted calculations on pixels that I mean, even if you are doing the check, you're still going to be doing a bunch of wasted processing on lights that simply aren't going to affect the pixel in the end. So, what we have here is we have just a fundamental problem in the way we're implementing lighting versus the way we need lighting to actually work. And the way we're going to solve this is by simply looking at lighting from a new perspective. Right now, we're looking at lighting from the uh, perspective of every pixel is going to have some final color, and if we know what all the lights are, we can calculate that final color. That's true. That's one valid way to look at lighting. But there's another way, and an arguably much more useful way to look at it from the perspective of writing a rendering engine. And that is, the final color of a pixel is the sum of all of the lights that are affecting that pixel. Just think about that for a moment. If all the color in the final pixel is the sum of every individual light in the pixel, then, well, that sort of breaks our problem down. All we have to do is we have to calculate all the pixels that a certain light affects, how much light that gets, and add them all together. And we can do that really easily using the blending features of OpenGL and multi-pass rendering. And that's going to immensely simplify this problem and it's going to make the lighting really... it's going to make it really easy to have tons and tons of different lights in the scene. Now, it's not going to necessarily make it cheap to do it, but it's going to make it easy to do it. And yeah, that's, going to, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be making a new lighting system where every light is only calculated in one pass. And that type of lighting... in one rendering pass, that is. And that type of lighting is called forward rendering. It's an extremely powerful rendering technique, if done correctly, and that's how we're going to start doing lights. It's, it brings its own set of problems, other than our previous problem of not being able to have multiple lights, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. It's still going to put a, be a giant step in the right direction. And I'm going to start very simply. I'm going to have some private vector 3F, I'll call it ambient light. So we're going to start very simply. We're not going to go all out and have every single form of light in. We're just going to start with basic ambient light. And I'm sort of like I'm doing main camera for now. I'm just going to temporarily initial initialize this to just some default value. In this case, I'm just going to say 0.2f for everything. There. That's our ambient light. And what we're going to do, actually, is we're going to end up throwing away all the shaders we have right now. Not entirely, just we're not going to be using basic shader and falling shader anymore, so say goodbye to them. We're going to be using forward rendering shaders now. So, yeah, I guess I can leave this here. I'll actually copy this and leave this as a comment. But yeah, we're going to we're going to be mostly get phasing out basic and falling shader. In fact, I'm going to go to my shaders folder, and I'm going to create a new shader. I'm going to call it forward-ambient.vs 
and I'm going to prefix it with forward it's just to show it's part of the forward rendering system and the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to need several shaders to actually make this whole thing work out so oh this is actually going to be very similar to the basic vertex shader so I'm going to open basic vertex 120 and I'm just going to copy this and I'm actually going to be using GLSL 1.2 zero to actually write the forward renderer just because I don't explicitly need any of the features of newer versions of OpenGL if, or GLSO. If you want to use the newer version, that's fine. I just, I don't need to. So there. Now I'm, I'm going to have a position and texture coordinate. It's going to help with that. It's going to take in, and I'm going to call it MVP just to be more specific. It's going to take in model view and projection all in one giant matrix. And yeah, that's all the forward renderer is going to do in the vertex shader, at least for the ambient pass. For the other pat or for the fragment part of it, for the fragment part of the ambient pass, so create other shader for forward ambient.fs, I'm going to do something similar to what I have in basic fragment 120.fs. Although this one's going to change quite a bit more. Rather than a vector, hmm, that, I'm going to just rename the vector 3f color to ambient intensity. It's going to serve mostly the same purpose, except, well, for one, I'm not going to be doing any checks here. I'm going to just be directly applying it. It's going to be texture 2d with that times the vector 4 of ambient intensity in one. There just directly output this time. That's the difference. And that should be, yeah, that should be the ambient pass. It's mostly a simplification of the basic fragment shader, or, or the basic shader. So yeah, how we use it's going to be different, but the code itself is fairly similar. So okay, with that, I think I can go ahead and minimize this and start creating my new set of shaders. So I'm going to go to my rendering package, going to create a new class, and I'm going to call it forward ambient, because, well, that's what it is. It's a forward, it's part of the forward rendering pipeline. It's part of the forward rendering pipeline, and it does the ambient pass. And I'm going to make it extend shader. I'm going to copy a lot of code from basic shader, just for the same reason as before. In fact, I'm going to start by copying everything from here. Yeah, the forward ambient like I said, it's mostly very similar to the basic shader, just used a little bit differently. So first major difference, it's going to take in forward ambient.vs and forward ambient.fs, of course. Guess that's not a major difference yet. Okay, I'm going to add the MVP. MVP. I'm going to add the ambient intensity there. And, oh, it's going to have an instance of forward ambient. And... Okay, I think that's all of the simple things I'm going to do right here. Now, here's where things are going to get a little bit different. For my rendering engine, I'm going to have some public vector 3f get ambient light. And that's just going to return ambient light. This is semi-temporary. I'm doing it mostly this way. I'm doing it this way mostly because my temporary solution for something else is having the rendering engine be well, being able to access the rendering engine from the shader classes. So, what? Oh yeah, it helps if you spell intensity right here. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, the reason I'm making a getter for the ambient light is so right here I can set ambient intensity to get rendering engine dot get ambient light and there now I should have access to the ambient intensity A and really with that that should be almost everything I need before I yeah I think it's after I add the files and before I compile the shader I'm gonna want to do one more thing gl bind attrib location and this is just because I'm doing 
GLSL 1.2, if you're doing 3.3, you don't need to do this, but I need it because I'm, well, I'm using early versions of, or the earlier version of GLSL. And I want to bind 0. Let's see, where is it? Yeah. As I'm just binding my attributes so that they're, I know which ones, well, you know. <laughs> I'm binding the attributes, there. I don't think this is the appropriate video to explain it. I have explained it in other videos. I believe those are the parameters. If not, I'm going to look at it off-screen. In fact, yeah, I'm going to go look at this off-screen because I need to include a very specific version of OpenGL to access this, and there's one more parameter I've forgotten about, so one moment. Okay. It turns out that this is part of GL20, but I've actually decided I'm going to move this. I'm going to just create a helper method in the shader class. Call, I'll call it set attrib location. It's going to take in some string attribute name and some int location. And I'm going to call that method or that function whatever <laughs> right here. And the reason for this is because it takes in the program and well, I don't really want to I, I don't want to create access for that outside of the shader class if I can help it. So for attribute name, I'm just going to replace position with that, and I'm going to replace a zero with location. So now I have a nice, convenient method for that. Set attrib location. Attribute name is position. Location is going to be zero. And for my other one, which is text chord, I'm just actually just going to copy and paste, so it's accurate. I'm going to set that to one. So with that, I think I should be able to go back to the rendering engine and change shader to forward ambient. Oh, and I'm going to render with shader. And... Okay, yeah, just import rendering dot star for everything. There. <laughs> that way I don't need any more ridiculous import errors. So now this, if I did everything right, this should just do pretty much what Basic Shader did. Except everything should probably be a little bit darker. Yeah, exactly. Good. So everything's working out, well, just fine so far. We have our ambient value. It's mostly doing the same thing as the, the um... What is it called? <laughs> as the Basic Shader right now, except it has what well, we're using the ambient light. But things are going to change very soon. I'm going to, because I do have this temporary set rendering engine thing here, I'm going to create sort of all my shader variables up front, at the top of the rendering thing, well, right under clear screen. I'm going to have shader, I'm going to call this forward ambient, and there, I'm going to set them up like this. And the reason I'm doing this is because we're about to do something a little bit different. What we're going to do after this is we're going to set set up OpenGL so that we can blend in other lighting effects onto, well, onto our ambient light. And here's how we're going to do this. This is going to be a little bit tricky. Well, not that tricky, but it's going to be a little tricky and a little bit interesting. And you know what? I think I'm actually going to call the video here. Because now we have all the basic framework set up, meaning all we have to do now is start blending the lighting effects onto our ambient light, our, our image. And that's where things are going to get interesting. So thank you, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you next time, where we're going to start adding back directional lighting, and then from there slowly adding on all the remaining types of lights. So thank you, see you then.